Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to CIO Entertainment, I'm your host Alan Hamilton and today guys we're going to be continuing our HU1 business studies revision videos and we're going to talk about more theories, this time we're going to talk about Bowman strategy clock and Porter's generic strategies. Um, there are right strategies, Bowman's can be a wee bit in depth, Porter's can be a wee bit hard to get your head around but they're certainly not as good as hands off in the Boston Matrix in my opinion, although they, uh, they are better than some like Handy and Hofstede, so we'll just get into this and we'll talk about it. So, Porter's genetic ge uh, generic strategies has a main thing of talking about a competitive advantage. So, it's basically all the different types of strategies you can use, can use to get a competitive advantage. And a competitive advantage is an advantage over above over competitors that is gained by offering consumers greater value or lower prices and providing greater benefits. Strategies that relate to the extent of which the scope is narrow versus broad and the extent to which the business seeks to differentiate its products. So as you see from the diagram, the source of competitive advantage, cost and differentiation, and the scope, narrow and broad. If you have a broad scope and you're more for based on the cost side, you're going to be cost leadership. If you have a narrow scope and you're on the cost side, it's cost focus. If you want to differentiate and you have a, and you have a broad scope, it's just differentiation. But if you're on the um, narrow side is differentiation focus. So you're just going to focus your differentiation or you only focus your costs. So let's go through this and let's talk about costs first. Cost leadership is an objective where you want to become the lowest cost producer in the industry. And this is where you will produce large scale, exploiting economies of scale. And to be the low cost producer, you will have to have a high level of productivity, a high capacity utilization, and lean production methods. Cost focus on the other hand is whenever you seek lower cost advantages in just one or a smaller number of market segments. And this is similar to a higher priced market leader, only you'll be acceptable to sufficient consumers. So moving on to differentiation focus where you will differentiate just one or a small number of target market segments, a lot like cost focus. And then differentiation leadership where you would target larger markets and achieve your competitive advantage for differentiation across the whole industry. And this is associated with charging a premium price. This will require substantial and sustained marketing investment and the methods of which will include superior product quality, branding, industry-wide distribution across all major channels and consistent promotional support. Bowman Strategy Clock then. Uh, Bowman Strategy Clock is a model that explores the options for strategic positioning, including a variety of options and how to position a product based on its price and perceived value. So on the bottom you have price and up the side you have perceived value to the consumer. So we move around and start at number one. If you have a low price and a low perceived value, then you have low price and low added value. But if you have medium perceived value but low price, then you are just low price. If you have a high perceived value to the customer but you have a low price, or then you're a hybrid, which is one of the best ones you want. You kind of want to have hybrid. Hybrids are sort of the best one you can have. If you are a very high perceived value, but sort of a medium sort of price, that's differentiation. If you are high perceived value, but you're on the higher side of the prices, then it's focused differentiation. If you have medium perceived value, but a very high price, then you are then you have risky high margins. If you have a high price and low perceived value, then it's a monopoly pricing because there's no substitutes. They have to buy it. You can get away with these high prices, and the perceived value doesn't really mean too much because they have to buy it anyway. And if you have a medium price and a low market share, then or sorry, and a low perceived value, then you're going to have a loss of market share. So positions one to two. A position one, which is low price and low added value, you have no, you're not in a competitive position. The products are not differentiated, and you have a low perceived value and low price. In position two, where you have low price, you'll be low cost leaders with a cost minimization strategy where you will exploit economies of scale, have low profit margins, and have a high output volume. In position three, which is hybrid, you'll have some prices, uh, some prices, and some product differentiation, and the, and you'll produce a good added value product. In position four, which is differentiation, you will offer the highest level of perceived value and added value, and the brand and product quality will be there along with high quality, and the brand will be best placed. In position five, which is focused differentiation, you'll have the highest price with a high perceived value and luxury brands. These are highly targeted segment s segmented uh, products, uh, along with promotion and distribution. In position six, which is risky high margins, you'll have high prices, but you're not offering anything extra in the perceived value. And if you, people buy it at high prices, then there's going to be high profits, but eventually consumers will find a better positioned product. Position seven with the monopoly pricing, you will not have to worry about perceived value because you can charge whatever the price you want, and this is only, and this is because it's the only product and there's no alternatives. 
in position 8 which is the loss of market share this will be a middle range price but you'll have low perceived value and therefore you're not going to sell as there's better options out there the customer value map and move so down there in the bottom right you see the customer value map as you see perceived benefit and perceived cost there's the fair value line that's what you're going to try and place your product on so moves you can move west by reducing your price you can move north by adding customer value and increasing perceptions of customer value you can move east by increasing your prices south by reducing your customer value southwest by reducing price and value north east by increasing price and value Southeast by reducing value and your and increasing your price, and northwest by increasing value and reducing your price. The final point I want to talk about are the two choices that a business has to restore competitiveness. The first one is that they can increase value by offering a product and not establishing a competitive advantage, but instead neutralize a competitive disadvantage. You can also accept the product is not going to be fixed quickly and therefore cut the prices and return to the value from money line as a discount product. The criticisms is that negative thinking justifies and, and justifies doing enough and it's not really good and um, prescriptions are not clear on a profit impact. Thanks for watching the video. I've been Dylan Hamilton from CA Entertainment and I will see you next time.